In a world where things are not always what they seem. In a world where strange creatures may be right around the corner. In a world where danger may be lurking in the next backyard. In a world of mystery, there is one dog who stands for truth, justice, and five or six mm. square meals a day. Uh. Ta-da! Hello! Wishbone here! Welcome to my new series of books, Wishbone Mysteries, starring me! In these books, I fight crime, I face danger, I perform incredible feats, all with my friends Joe, Sam, and David. Together, we're keeping the streets of Oakdale safe for kids and dogs, especially dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Wishbone Mysteries are brought to you by Big Red Chair Books. Look for them at your local library and wherever books are sold. Hello! Please stay tuned following this presentation for previews of other Lyric Home videos. And now, our feature presentation! <laughs> American celebration of freedom, fun, and food. <clears throat> well, right now, I'm having a little difficulty with the freedom issue. Hey, easy, Wishbone. I know you don't like being on a leash, but there's too much going on today for you to be running around by yourself. But that's what carnivals are all about, Joe, running around free. Maybe getting fed for free. Oh, look, there's Sam and Walter's booth. Oh. Hi. Hey, guys, how's hey. it going? 
Oh, but pizza's selling great. You can't live on corn dogs alone, you know. <laughs> what exactly are corn dogs made of? Look. Oh, it's been so much fun just watching people in that. You want to try it? Yes! I vote we all go try it. Mom, can you watch Wishbone? Sure. But, Joe, don't I get to go? Come on, Wishbone. Let's go listen to some music. I'll see you later, Walter. But I voted. Look! Hi, Travis. Hi, Marcus. Melina has such a beautiful voice. Thanks. Yeah, she's about to sing her second solo. Oh, great. Hi, Wishbone. Hi, Marcus. I'm a political prisoner. How's your day been? Miss Talb, can I take Wishbone around the carnival? Sure. No cotton candy, Wishbone. No cotton kit. Oh, now this is going too far. Ellen, you can't. I am a dog living in the United States. I have rights. Freedom of speech, freedom of treats, freedom to go outside when I need to. Here's the last step to skip one. Oh, thanks, Hank. Hey, and be sure to thank your grandfather for letting us borrow so many family heirlooms. I'm just sorry he didn't want to come. But I guess having all of this is the next best thing to having Ethan Johnstone himself. Uh, trust me, Miss Gilmore. He'd send over his entire house to get himself out of public appearance. Oh, well, that's too bad. I bet a lot of people would like to talk to the oldest descendant of Moses Johnstone, the founder of Oakdale. <laughs> Hi, Miss Gilmore. Hi, Hank. Well, hello there, Marcus. Hi, Marcus. Are you enjoying the carnival? How come nobody's asking the tied-up little dog if he's enjoying the <clears throat> carnival? Hey, Marcus, you been in the bounce house yet? Not yet. You want to go? I promised Miss Gilmore I'd work the booth right now. I might hit it after my shift. Miss Gilmore, do you watch Wishbone for a minute? Oh, well, I don't know. Thanks, Miss Gilmore. Wanda, you don't want to hold on to that. It's got dog germs. Dog germs. Wishbone, why don't we go find Ellen? Hold down the fort, will you, Hank? Great idea! We'll go to Ellen, and I'll present a list of demands. Demand number one, remove Wanda from the end of the leash. Demand number two, remove Wishbone from the other end of the leash. <laughs> Ellen! Oh, Ellen! 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 I just heard something, and it sounded very, very bad. Here, here, it's this thing right here. Look. Oh no, Melina. Okay, everyone, I want you to move off the stage in an orderly fashion. This is not a drill. Scene. Are you all right, ma'am? I'm all right. Are you all right? Wanda, may I call you Wanda? Wanda, how did you know this accident was going to happen? Well, I didn't. I, I didn't. But but Wishbone here did, and, and and it was all because of him that I was able to get to Molina in time. That dog. Quick, get a oh. shot of that animal. Hello. But his keen hearing, he he knew the lights were going to collapse well before I did. He, he, he is the real hero here. Melina, are you all right? 
What could have been a tragic event was prevented by a brave and quick-thinking woman. From the Oakdale Summer Carnival, this is Mitch McCain for Fast News 57. Remember, when you're looking for news, look for Mitch McCain. No, no, I, I, I couldn't have done anything without Wishbone here. He is just such an amazing dog. <laughs> he is, isn't he? <laughs> That's right. You see what I can do when no one's holding on to my leash? You're holding on to my leash. <laughs> you know, this is the kind of story the network's looking for. Well, it's not the kind of story I'm looking for, pal. <gasps> I am out of here. Excuse me, pardon me, one side, coming through. Pardon me, oh, terribly sorry. I tell you, leashes are the curse of modern civilization. No great hero ever lived on a leash. Was Davy Crockett ever on a leash? What about Daniel Boone? Or Wyatt Earp? Or... John Wayne! Hey. <gasps> the Wild West. Now those were the days when an honest dog was free to roam the open plains. I know someone else who loved the Old West. The writer William Sidney Porter, who is known by his pen name, O. Henry. O. Henry moved from North Carolina to Texas and actually worked as a cowboy, wanting to experience firsthand the magic of the Wild West. But the days of the cowboy were giving way to the modern age. Boom towns became ghost towns. But O. Henry was determined to capture for all time the spirit of the American West. He wrote a collection of short stories and called them Heart of the West. In those days, the cattlemen were the anointed. They might have ridden in golden chariots had their tastes so inclined. They drove huge herds across the vast plains of Texas. From the dusty trails came stories about a character of legendary proportions who cast a giant shadow across the Wild West. Long Bill Longley was his name. Long Bill and his best friend Tom Merwin were a fiercely independent breed. Why, there wasn't an obedient school in all the land that could tame them. Yeah! Yeah! Get up there, cow! Yeah. Who cow? Yeah. Long Bill was just a pup. He was known as one of the best hands around. He worked long, hard hours on the open range. <coughs> oh, okay, Tom, put her in there. That's got it. <coughs> hey, Tom, we got 10 miles to go and we're out of posts. Luck Thrift in a cool head raised him from cowboy to cowman. I'm cleaned out. Then there was Calliope Catesby, who gambled away every break he ever got, leaving him with nothing but a hole in his pocket and a hole in his heart. Say, Tom, it's been a while since Calliope's been in one of his bad humors. That's true, Bill. Flappy has been mighty calm these days. If he keeps losing money the way he has been, I don't know how long it's gonna last. <laughs> the cattle boom caught Long Bill in a stampede of dollars, and he became a baron of beef and bone. 
he built a residence close to the little frontier city of Chaparosa, Texas, in order to taste the urban joys of success. Although the cattle boom didn't catch Tom Merwin in a stampede of dollars, he remained in the cowboy trade. An honest hand, a hard worker, and a good friend. And every day without fail, Tom would ride into town and meet up with Bill to have lunch. Bill hung up his spurs, organized the first National Bank of Chaparosa, and became bank president. to follow Bill and Tom every day of their lives. Every day, that is, except today. Happy days, Bill. <sighs> How do, Tom? I'm feeling lucky. Well, I wish I were. Take a look at this. I received that by post today. That double magnifying glass wearing bank examiner is coming back to Chaparosa. I tell you, that man could find something bad in the middle of a church. Oh, come on, Bill. I'm sure your books are as straight as an arrow. Hey, look at this. I found this silver dollar across from the livery stable. I'm gonna take it as a sign. I'm gonna ask her today. Now, you wouldn't be referring to the notoriously single and beautiful Maine Duggan, now, would you? The one and only. Care to come along and see how it's done? <laughs> you saved me from a mound of paperwork, Tom. Guess it's only fitting that I save you from a broken heart when Maine turns you down flat. Not today, Bill. Say, let's ask Marshal Buck to come along for lunch. Sounds good. Uh, good to be out of that bank. It sure is a fine day, isn't it, Bill? I reckon you said something we can finally agree on, Tom. <laughs> uh, say, uh, you heard from Ed lately? Oh, not yet, but, uh, he'll be along. Don't you worry. All right. Yeah, good day to you, Miss Wilhelmina. Oh, how are things at the bank, Bill? Oh, can't complain, George. Can't complain. So, George. See you, George. I do, Buck. Would you care to join us over to Mames for lunch? No, no, not today, Bill. I'm glad to see you, though. Um, hey, Buck. Well, what is it I can do for you, Buck? Hey, you know, I'll go on over and get us some stools, Bill. All right, Tom. See you, bud. Now, Calliope, been putting out signals of approaching bad spirits. He's been finding fault with everything that's said to him. This morning, he kicked his own dog off the porch of the hotel, refused to apologize. Well, that's a bad sign indeed. Could be he's on the verge of another shooting spree. Well, Buck, I suppose the best thing to do is keep an eye on him, like you've been doing. And don't you worry, I'll be here to help you if you need me. Well, I thank you, Bill, and I'll take you up another day on that lunch. Mr. Longley, do you remember me? J. Edgar Todd, bank examiner. 
Wasn't expecting you for another day or so, Mr. Todd. Ah, uh, Mr. Longley, I imagine we work a bit faster and more efficiently back east than you people here out west. I've come from Philadelphia to examine your books. Well, Mr. Todd, you'll find the First National Bank just down the way on your right. I'll be at Maine Dugan's restaurant, directly across the street. Very good, sir. <laughs> I, uh, I shall meet up with you there. Hmm. At least we know where to step out west. Or rather, where not to step. <laughs> Uh, Marcus, Melina, Travis, Travis, here, yeah, yeah. right over here. Okay. Okay. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Oh, Ellen, Ellen. Right here, right here. And yes, you guys, uh, Joe, Sam, Walter, okay. Right here, here you go. Here you go. Okay. No, 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 you two switch. You two switch. Oh, Here's some red sticks. Oh, there you go. Okay. Oh, look, up. Oh, it's starting. Spectators watched in awe as 12 members of the Glee Club were rescued from the collapsing stage lights by Wanda Gilmore and her dog, Wishbone. What? Her dog? And they call themselves a news program. Mitch McCain was on the scene when the accident happened. How did you know that accident was going to happen? Oh, well, I, I, I didn't. I, I didn't, but, but, but Wh Wishbone here did. And, and it was all because of him that I was able to get to Molina in time. <laughs> Wanda Gilmore, owner and operator of her town's newspaper, the Oakdale Chronicle, is not only one of Oakdale's leading citizens, but its newest local hero. In an upcoming report, we'll be profiling the life and times of Wanda and her amazing dog, Wishbone. <laughs> I'll say, I look twice as big on TV. Guys, tell me the truth, really. Do I need to lose some weight? Wishbone just loves all this attention. <laughs> yes, he does. I'm sorry they think Wishbone is my dog, Joe. Oh, it's OK. It's fun seeing him on TV. They ask if he could be there for my profile. Is that OK? Sure. <laughs> Woo, all this publicity has given me quite the appetite. What about you, Wanda? Oh, oh. Mm, mm, mm. thank you. Uh, Mm, eating is such a civilized activity. That's the way it was in the Old West. Every day at lunch, cowboys would put down their work and take up their forks. And Maine Dugans was the most popular eatery in Chaparosa. If any place could be called the center of town, it was Maine's. And Long Bill never missed a meal. Howdy, Bill! Howdy, everyone. Now, what's wrong, Tom? You look like you just sat in a big old pile of sagebrush. I lost my lucky silver dollar. Well, that's too bad, Tom. Get right with you, boys. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, this is my kind of place, and these are my kind of people. Yeah, what can I get you, honey? Hey, what's the matter there, Tom? Cat got your tongue? <laughs> well, ma'am, I think I'll have the meatloaf with mashed potatoes and gravy, fried chicken and black-eyed peas, a turkey pot pie, and a big old steak smothered in onions. Is that all? We're running a special on lamb stew, you know. Well, bring it on, ma'am. <laughs> and could you throw in half a dozen biscuits? I've always been partial to biscuits. Sure, Bill. What about you, Tom? I'll just have the same as Bill. You sure that's gonna be enough for a big, strong man like you, Tom? Well, well, if it isn't our local purveyor of goods both fine and gentle, then here is an edifice of local knowledge and social graces. Your mother must be very proud of it. Clapping. Well, howdy, Calliope. Well, howdy, Mame. What can I get you? Oh, I reckon today I'll just have the usual. I'll be back before your stomach growls. So, Calliope, uh, I saw you unloading the cattle feed at the train station. 
Yeah. And I suppose you want to make something of it. I suppose I was just making polite conversation is all. Well, I don't need you rubbing my nose in the disparity of our respective financial situations. For crying out loud, Calliope, nobody's rubbing your nose in nothing. This'll get you boys started. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, I wonder if you'd do me the honor of joining me on a sunset ride this evening? Well, I reckon you've never seen such a sunset as the one you'll see from sitting atop my trusty steed apricot. Calliope, I like you as well as I like any of them. But there isn't a man in the world I'd ever spend time with, and there never will be. Maybe you just ain't met the right fellow yet, ma'am. Do you know what a man is in my eye? He's a tomb. He's a sarcophagus for the interment of beef, steak, pork chops, liver and onions, bacon, ham and eggs. He's that and nothing more. For two years, I've watched men eat, 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 until they represent nothing on earth to me but ruminant bipeds. Well, man's gotta eat, don't he? A man, a sausage grinder, and a sack of flour awaken me exactly the same sentiments. But man. No, Calliope. I'll spend time with no man and have him sit at the breakfast table and eat, and come back to lunch and eat, and then happen in again at supper to eat, eat, eat. I knew there was some reason I was never interested in Maine. But, Maine, don't girls ever... No, they don't. They eat politely, they nibble a little bit, and they use manners. But I thought when you put sweets in front of a girl... For goodness sakes, Tom, change the subject. Look at you. Ain't no woman ever gonna be interested in you know-how. Now you've gone and made her jump to conclusions about all men. Them fight words, Tom. Now hold on just a minute, boys. No sense fighting over a woman when we got all this good food just to sit in here getting cold. This town ain't big enough for the both of us. Calliope. I got as much right to live here as you do, Tom Merwin. Just because you got more money than me doesn't mean you can tell me what to do. Is that a fact? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's my dinner! Now look at what you've done. Looks like dinner's on top! <laughs> Bring by some of my friends later and they can lick the place clean. 
Uh, my, uh, my dear Mr. Longley, has there, uh, has there been some sort of trouble? Oh, just another day in Chapel Rosa. I see. Uh, there's this matter with the books. Hmm? Oh, yes, the books. So, any brands in the Roundup you didn't like the look of? Uh, well, everything is in order, except for a call loan of $10,000 made to a Mr. Tom Merwin. Now, you violated two national banking laws. Now, hold on just a minute. First, you're not allowed to loan that much money to one person. Second, you made a loan with absolutely no collateral from Mr. Merwin and therefore have no guarantee the loan will be repaid. <laughs> You're in a most serious position, Mr. Longley. The government has the right to prosecute. Prosecute? Now look here just a minute, Mr. Todd. This here's Tom Merwin right here. Howdy. Yeah. Uh. Now, I made that loan to Tom on his word. And I've always found that when a man's word is good, why, well, it's just about the best security there is. Oh, that's right. My word's as good as a law-abiding official contract. See, Tom heard a 2,000 head of cattle that could be bought for $8 a head. Cattle I knew I could sell in Kansas City for $15 on the hoof. Be that as it may. His brother Ed took the cattle on the market about three weeks ago. He ought to be back most any day now with enough money to pay that note and a whole lot more. That's right. That's the plain fact of the matter. And I think that makes good business sense, don't you? Well, Mr. Longley, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to Hilldale tonight to examine a bank there. I'll pass through Chaparosa on my way back the day after tomorrow. You have until noon that day to pay back this loan. Otherwise, I'm afraid I'll have to do my duty. City slickers. Huh. They sure are done different back east. What's the atmosphere like here now that you're working with Oakdale's newest hero? Oh, well, everybody works very hard here, um, but nobody works harder than Wanda herself. Wanda always says, if you don't want to work hard, you might be happier somewhere else. Excuse me. That's great. Okay, let's uh, move on to Wanda now. Nice to meet you, Mr. McCain. No, <clears throat> nice to meet you, Mr. McCain. Me too. Mr. We're McC gonna get a shot of you working and then some more sound bites from some of the other employees. Sound bites? Oh, sounds great. <laughs> that reminds me, I made snacks. Cookie? Oh, I'd love a cookie. I... Nice, nice to meet you, Mr. Mc McCain. Hi, Miss Gilmore. Oh, hi, Sam. I'm sorry, I can't talk to you right now. The TV people are here. <laughs> hi, Sam. Pretty hey. exciting, huh? Yeah. Could you just huddle over your desk here, please? Huddled over here? Well, I usually sit over to... <laughs> well, whatever you say, Mr. McCain. Good, good. Ready? <clears throat> nice to meet you, Mr. McCain. Wait a minute. Hold the roll. Could uh, someone please put a leash on the dog? But I'm Wanda's amazing dog, Wishbone. Come on, Wishbone. Come on. Okay, I'll, I'll just wait over here till you're ready. <clears throat> In three. This is Mitch McCain for Fast News 57. Remember, when you're looking for news, look for Mitch McCain. I'm here with Wanda Gilmore, an Oakdale hero and a woman of mystery as well. Mystery? This is an exciting time for you, isn't it, Miss Gilmore? Well, yes, in a way, I guess it is. Miss Gilmore, our investigation has discovered that not only do you own the Oakdale Chronicle and the beautiful building it's in, but you also happen to own the building that Oakdale Sports and Games is in. Isn't that so? Well, yes, but I've tried to keep that quiet. Well, I don't mean keep that quiet. <laughs> it's just that it's rather personal. There are particular reasons for my owning it. So you just want to keep it a secret for personal reasons? Wait, wait, please. Oh, you're turning my words around. Isn't that what you said? There are personal reasons? 
I wanted to be sure that the old Oakdale firehouse was preserved. You see, my father instilled in me a love of these wonderful old buildings, and so when I was able to purchase it, I jumped at the opportunity. So you began buying up government buildings to control development. I see. Is that also what your father wanted? No, of course not. That is not what I meant. You're changing my words again. I think I have everything I need. Gilmore, local hero or town tyrant. Things may not be as they appear for the Oakdale hero. Learn about her secrets and backroom dealings in Mitch McCain's exclusive investigative report tomorrow on Fast News. Ellen, I just don't understand it. He took everything I said and turned it into something I didn't mean. It was unbelievable. Oh, Wanda. You know, I've heard about that guy from Channel 57. I mean, he wrecks people's lives just because he wants to get a story. But why would he do that to me? He called me a hero. Can't we just tell him how great you are? I mean, of course, Wanda, we'll do anything we can to help you. Definitely, Miss Gilmore. Uh-oh, he's back! Joe, cover me! OK, OK, what do we do? Um, I know. Everybody get down here on the floor with me, and we'll all get real low. I wonder what's wrong with him. TV crew. Oh, I don't want to talk to him again. I can't face him right now. Um, that's okay. Uh, why don't you just duck out the back and it'll be fine. Psst, Alan, let's all duck out the back. Alan. Hello? Oops. Hi. Mitch McCain, Fast News 57. Oh, uh, Mr. McLean. McCain. Uh, right. Uh, well, I, I hope you're ready to set the record straight about Wanda. Absolutely. Every time this guy shows up, bad stuff happens. I think I'm just gonna grab my squeaky book and head for the backyard. <gasps> squeaky! Why don't you just sit at the table and just act natural? You too, Joe. <clears throat> uh, you go stand over there. Have you always been on good terms with Wanda Gilmore? Oh, yes. I mean, Wanda Gilmore is a wonderful person. And Oakdale's very proud of all she's done. Yeah! Way to go, Ellen! I mean, she's, um... Well, she's always there if someone's in trouble. Or if you just need a friend to talk to. Keep talking. And, uh, and she helps the kids in the neighborhood. Ow. And she cares a lot about the community. What was that? I mean, she just... She doesn't have a devious bone in her body. I'm a dust bunny. I'm a dust bunny. Look, it's Wishbone. What? Uh, bye! What's he doing in your house? Well... well... Wait, wait a minute. That bowl has Wishbone on it. Is Wishbone your dog? Uh, yes, he is. Uh, um, well, actually, he's my son, Joe's dog. But it's like he belongs to the whole town. He really only sleeps here. Oh, really? I see.
And now, Mitch McCain's Fast News 57 investigative report on Wanda Gilmore, local hero or town tyrant. Thank you, Helen. We watched in awe as Wanda Gilmore rescued young Melina Finch from the wreckage of the collapsing stage of the summer carnival. But there appears to be a dark side to Wanda Gilmore. We talked to some of her employees down at the Chronicle. Well, everybody works very hard here. Wanda always says, if you don't want to work hard, you might be happier someplace else. Excuse me. And Travis Del Rio told us about Wanda's stronghold on the local business community. Um, she, uh, she loaned me the startup money. Um, she also helped uh, Walter Kepler start his business, uh, Pepper Pete's, in her other building. So she owns Pepper Pete's, too? Well, yeah. Look, I'm sorry. I thought everyone knew that. And in return, Travis Del Rio is forced to advertise in her newspaper. Oh, give me a to take break. advantage of television's ability to reach more people. And what about the dog she claimed was hers? Wanda's neighbor, Ellen Talbot. Well, actually, he's my son, Joe's dog. Wanda has even persuaded Wishbone's owner to go along with the sham. He really only just sleeps here. Wow, that's very interesting, Mitch. You wouldn't think such an upstanding citizen would be so deceptive. I know what you mean, Helen. But tell me, Mitch, what is the latest piece of information you've uncovered? Well, Helen, I'm standing here on beautiful historic Oak Street in front of the now infamous Oakdale Chronicle. We were able to uncover city records that unequivocally shows that Wanda Gilmore actually owns every building on this fabled block. Does Wanda Gilmore have her own self-serving plans for downtown Oakdale? As she tries to possess it all, will there soon be a four-story shopping mall on Oak Street? Maybe her public already thinks so. I'm here with Mr. Leon King, an upstanding citizen of our local community. I've known about this woman for years. If it doesn't make money for Wanda Gilmore, it doesn't get done in this town. Oh, of course, what is it? doesn't get done in this town. Thank you, Mr. King. Tune in tomorrow to learn more about the real reasons behind the secret dealings of Wanda Gilmore. Is she the local hero or the town tyrant? This is Helen Davidson for Fast News 57. That's ridiculous. They've taken everything out of context. And completely turned it around. I can't believe it. Believe it, Sam. I've seen this guy in action, and it's not pretty. Uncle Travis, is Miss Gilmore really the town tyrant? Yeah, does she really make you advertise in her newspaper? Ah, uh, not at all. You have to understand that those TV people twisted everything around. They make her sound so horrible. Sam, Wanda's the best landlord anyone could want. You know how easy she made it for us to take over Pepper Pete's. Your father's right, Sam. There was nothing deceptive about what Wanda did. I mean, she kept her father's dream of preserving the beauty and the history of Oakdale. And that's it. Yeah. Why should you get in trouble for helping your friends? Tom, you, uh, heard anything from Ed today? Not yet. I guess he'll be along any day now. Well, I checked the paperwork, and technically speaking, that bank examiner is right about your loan. Now, you and I know that loan is okay, but that nitpicking J. Edgar Todd is gonna look at it and say that it ain't on the up and up. What do you think's gonna happen, Bill? Well, if I don't have that money by noon tomorrow, I suppose it means I'm going to get jumped on with both Uncle Sam's feet. Don't worry, Bill. I'll raise the money for you on time. Uh, I know you would if you could, Tom. What was Long Bill thinking? He is president of the First National Bank. There are government regulations and such. He had no right putting through such an improper loan. So, you gonna help me out, Coop? Now, don't say no. 
I owe that money on a call loan. It's been called. And the man who called it is a man that I've slept on the same blanket with in cow camps for 10 years. Now, he's got to have that money. And I've got to get it for him. Well, I wish I could, Tom, but I have a partner, you know? And besides that, we're making a shipment of $15,000 to Maya Brothers in Rockdale to buy cotton. He goes out on the first coach tomorrow at dawn, so you see that leaves out cash quite short. I see. Sorry we can't arrange it for you, Tom. George? Howdy, Tom. You know, George, I got a cattle deal going. Gonna come through any day now. That's so. Yep. But you see, I need some capital to cover a loan I took out from Long Bill. Oh? Uh -huh. What say you front me 10000 and I'll double that return for you in a few days? $10,000. I don't have that kind of money. Long Bill in some sort of trouble, Tom? Oh, it's that dang bank examiner come to town and called in my loan. If I don't pay that money back, it's gonna be on Long Bill's head for giving it to me in the first place. I'm sure sorry to hear Long Bill is in trouble with the government. as Wanda Gilmore performed her heroic deed that day. But who were we really watching? Did we know we were watching Wanda Gilmore, secret landlord of downtown Oakdale? No. Does Wanda Gilmore rightfully own the Oakdale Chronicle? Did her father Giles Gilmore obtain the Chronicle by swindling its previous owner? Could property snatching be a family tradition? Tune in tonight for the full story. Sunshine. Now they're going after my father! What did I ever do to them? Well, how did your father get the Chronicle, Wanda? No, 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 I wasn't even born then. Next, they'll be saying my papers are forged. I don't understand why they're doing this to Miss Gilmore. Well, Joe, there are journalists who think some things are more newsworthy than others, even if it might end up hurting someone. 
Wish we could do something. What could we do? They're a TV station. You'd be surprised what a few people can do, especially when they know the truth. What if Miss Gilmore really doesn't own the Chronicle? Maybe we need to do a little investigating of our own. Paper goes up. Paper goes down. Paper goes up. Paper goes down. Paper goes up. <laughs> I could do this all day. Paper goes up. OK, Wishbone, quit pulling around. Oh, you guys get to have all the fun. Sam, Sam, move that little lever and watch what happens. Paper goes up. Paper goes down. Paper goes, Sam. Find anything yet? Not really. Hey, wait. On May 22nd, 1932, the ownership changed from Skelton to Gilmore. There's nothing in this history book either. We're really coming up empty, you know. I found the 25th anniversary special edition of the Chronicle. Maybe there's something useful in it. Oh, come on, it's my turn. Paper goes up, paper goes down. Look, here's a picture of Miss Gilmore's father. Who are all those other people? I'm not sure, but I know that's Ethan Johnstone. Well, that's Hank's grandfather. Maybe Hank can help us out. Is there a way to get a print out of this? Sure. Linda. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Tell us what's going on. We've been getting calls all day. What's this about you not owning the Chronicle? How are we supposed to respond to these allegations? Please. What do you want us to say? Everyone, there's nothing to worry about. Let's get back to work. Wanda, this is a story. We're going to have to run something in the paper about it. I need to ask you, do you own the Chronicle or don't you? Well, of course I own the paper, Jenny. Please, I just need some time to think this through. Miss Gilmore, is there any way that I can help? Thanks, Hank. Now, I'm sure this will all get straightened out and we can go back to the way things used to be. I'm afraid that can't happen, Wanda. Leon King, what do you want? Oh, Wanda, please. Look, for you. A cyclamen? Well, how beautiful. Well, I know how much you love plants, and I thought this would be a fitting going away gift. Who's going away? Oh, you are. You see, I am now the rightful owner of the Oakdale Chronicle. What are you talking about? I did a little checking, Wanda. According to city records, the Oakdale Chronicle building is still listed in the name of Abel Skelton. All I had to do was find Skelton's living relative and buy it from him. Legally buy it, I might add. Now you look here. My father built this paper. Your father? Your father never owned the Oakdale Chronicle. No telling what kind of shady deal he made with Skelton. <laughs> the beauty of it is that I wouldn't have known about the rightful ownership if you hadn't become Oakdale's newest hero. That Mitch McCain is really something. He should be. I pay him enough. What? You own that TV station? As well as two others. But don't worry, Wanda. Your paper is in the hands of an experienced newsman. Oh. I won't turn this paper over to your kind of journalism. There must be something I can do. Oh, there is one. Get out of my newspaper. You've got till the end of the day. I'll be back then and decide who else goes.
Да. О, да. Are you okay, Wanda? No. Is there anything I can do? I doubt it, Ellen. It's all a little bit late for anything, isn't it? No, it isn't, Wanda. It's never too late for your best friend. Thanks. Well, it'll all work out. Because you're bigger than the newspaper, Wanda. And Wanda Gilmore is so much more than what a Mitch McCain shows us on TV. I'm not so sure anymore, Ellen. I'm not so sure. Case never needed to be fixed up this way, Tom. I was desperate, Bill. You called your loan. I had to answer you. You're a good friend, Tom. I admire your loyalty. When Coop told me about all that money going out on the stage this morning, I, I didn't know what else to do. Well, something will work out. What time did you say that bank examiner was coming back? Around noon. What about Ed? You think he's on his way back with that money? He's got to be. There ain't no two ways about it. I suppose we could take us a ride into Montgomery, see if he's there. Sure. It'd be just like old times again, out on the trail. We had us some good times, didn't we, Tom? We sure did, Bill. We sure did. <laughs> Dead gummit Clive is at it again. Oh, bury me not on the lone prairie where the coyotes howl and the wind blows free. And an two most upstanding citizens of Chaparosa. Why don't you just do this town a favor and go crawl under a rock till you sleep this thing off? I don't have to take no orders from you, Tom Merwin. You two. You two strut around here like you own this town. Now, hold on just a minute. What's all this fuss about, Calliope? Just pure dang luck that you two are where you're at and I'm where I'm at. With a different roll of the dice, why, I'd be wearing your boots right now. Well, if you just worked for once in your life, you would be wearing boots like mine. 
You see, that's what I just don't understand. How can a feller be so dang stupid? I was in a fighting mood, Tom. And I got a bullet right... right here with your name on it. Tom Merwin, I'm calling you out. She is out, Clippy. Well, okay. All right, Clippy. I'll take you up on that. Uh, why don't you call out the paces, Bill? Uh, oh, uh, sure thing, Tom. All right, boys, back to back. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. right now. Come inside, I'll make you a nice breakfast. Well, okay. I guess that means you'll be having your breakfast somewhere else today. Shot at Maine. He never shot at Maine before. Oh, now he's asking for it. Boy, oh, I sure am glad I found you two fellas. Buck, guess you're right about Calliope. Calliope's out there shooting up the whole town again, Buck. Now, what are you going to do about it? I don't see that I got much of a choice. Raise your right hand. He's kidding, right? I hereby deputize the both of you. Till this situation is resolved. Now. We gotta gather this fella in. I guess we've done just about all the talking we can do. So you shoot just as soon I, as you get a shot. I don't have a gun. You keep behind cover and you bring him down. I certainly wish I hadn't come to this with Calliope, but I guess he just went too far. It's up to Calliope to turn up his toes this time, I reckon. And don't be too reckless, boys. What Calliope shoots at, he hits. I don't have a gun.
blow you up, huh? Here we go! Short straw stays. Bill? Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, that's it then. Bill and I will go into the station. You stay here and cover the building in case he comes out. Oh, let me go in, Buck. Draws have been drawn, Tom. Come on, Bill. <laughs> I don't have a gun. <laughs> Lucky dog. Does anybody else see what's wrong with this picture? So then the dog says, I don't have a gun. <laughs> oh. That's funny. Mr. King owns it? Where's Miss Gilmore? I haven't seen her since he left. And I've been looking through the Chronicle's archives ever since. But I still haven't found anything that proves Mr. King wrong. I read the whole comic section. No help there. We've been trying to help, too. This is all we turned up in the library. That's my grandfather. Yeah, we thought he might know something. I never thought of that. Let's go ask him. Hey, why don't you guys go see him, and I'll keep looking in the archives. Good idea. Let me show you where they are. OK. Hey, Joe, looks like we've been deputized to save the ranch. So, you think he'll remember anything? I don't know. He usually can't remember what he had for breakfast. Grandpa? Who wants to know? It's me, Hank. Hank? Your grandson.
Oh, that Hank. <laughs> he would you? This is my friend, Joe Talbot. I meant the dog. Yeah, he is. This is Wishbone. He can wait by the bushes. He'll be OK. Hi there, little fella. Come on up here. I'll handle this, boys. Grandpa, it's like this. Mr. King claims that Wanda doesn't really own the Chronicle, and we were wondering if you could provide us with any information at all that could possibly help, or you could just scratch my head. We were just wondering if you knew anything about the Oakdale Chronicle. Of course I know the Oakdale Chronicle. It's the paper. We know. Could you tell us what you remember about this picture? Do you remember anything? Yep. That's me. Right, Grandpa. We just wanted to know if Giles Gilmore really owned the paper. Of course he owned it. Owned it fair and square. Didn't he, boy? Uh, sure. We remember, don't we, Jack? His name is Wishbone, sir. Right. You told me that. But I just can't tell you how much he reminds me of my dog, Jack. <laughs> you look at this picture. Spitting image. How do you know it was Mr. Gilmore's fair and square? Look right there in your picture, Hank. Where? You see, it's there, on the wall. Yeah, but what is it? That's Gilmore's deed. On the wall? I'll never forget that old torn up thing. You see, on the night that Gilmore took the paper over from Skelton, he didn't have anything to write on. So they asked me to get something. The only thing I could lay my hands on at the time was this old calendar. So I tore off a month, they signed it, and they stuck it right up there on the wall. Hank, that's it. Grandpa, do you think you could help us find it? No, that has to be at the Chronicle. Those Gilmores never threw anything away, especially something that important. No. Guys, I've looked all over this place, and I haven't seen anything that looks like that. Mm, nothing down here. Should be easy to spot with Gilmore's winning poker hand right next to it. Poker hand? It all happened one stormy night about 65 years ago. My daddy was playing poker with Giles Gilmore and Abel Skelton in the back room of the inn. I was in charge of keeping the glasses full. Last hand, gentlemen. The least you could do is let me win one hand before the night is over. Thanks, Jack. Giles Gilmore was a young upstart in town with big dreams and a shrewd instinct for good deals. Well, what you gonna do there, Giles? He was a real risk taker. I guess that's why he loved to play cards. And on that night, he was dancing with Lady Luck. I'll start with 500. Two of the richest men in town were there, and Gilmore was winning every hand. One of those men was Abel Skelton. See so your five. And I'll raise you a thousand. It's too rich for me. I'll see your thousand. I'll raise your five hundred. Skelton didn't like Gilmore very much, and he was determined to win at least one hand before the night was over. See? And I'll raise you 5,000. All right, Abel. I'll see your 5,000 and raise you another 5,000. Keys to the Chronicle. It's not much of a paper now, but it's got to be worth at least five thousand dollars. I call. <sighs> you. 
you tricked me. You and that mangy mongrel tricked me. Now, now, Abel. Now, now, Giles beat you fair and square. Besides, the dog belongs to Ethan here. Uh, Ethan, why don't you run and get Mr. Gilmore something to write on so we can write this deal up proper? And that's how it all ended up. Skelton moved on to another town, and Gilmore made the paper what it is today. That's a good story. Yeah, but who ever heard of dogs playing poker? So you see, there is no way Gilmore would have lost that deed. He had it framed and everything. Well, what are we standing around for, people? What we need is some action! <laughs> Become. Well, it looks like you've got yourself in quite a fix, Calliope Catesby. Well, I beg you. I swear if you give me another chance, I'll quit the racket. I'll drop the tangle foot and the gun play it, and I won't play hoss no more. I'll be a good citizen. I'll, I'll go to work. I'll quit my foolishness. I swear by gum. Please, Bill, you got to help me. I'll do anything. I'll, I'll snort a prickly pear up my nose. I'll, yeah. I'll dip myself in plum jelly and roll on Ant Hill. Now, hold on just a minute, Calliope. I reckon I've known you for a long time. And I guess what it all comes down to is whether I can take you at your word or not. There now, great big strong man. That bullet never touched you. You was knocked out by that shutter there, and it kind of paralyzed you for a spell. I've heard of this before. Oh, concussion. That's what they call it. You don't know me, I reckon. I just come in off that train from Alabama to see my son. Just think now. That little old boy of mine has got to be an officer. City marshal of a whole town. Well, that's kind of like a constable, ain't it? I heard them guns are shooting while I was coming off that train. Listen, you mustn't hold no grudge against my boy for having to shoot at you. An officer has got to tend to the law. That's his duty. And them that acts bad and lives wrong just has to suffer. So don't blame my son none. He's always been a good boy. Won't you let me give you some advice, sir? Be a good man and leave liquor alone. Live peaceable and godly. Keep away from bad company. Work honest. Sleep sweet. What does the, uh, the marshal think about his mother's advice? 
think it's uh, you think it's good advice? I says this. If I was a drunken and desperate character, I'd follow it. And if I was in your place and he was in mine, I'd say, Marshal, I'm willing to swear that if you give me another chance, I'll be a good citizen. I'll, I'll go to work, I'll drop my foolishness. You have my word on that. That's what I'd say to you if you was the marshal. I was in your place. You was in my place. You said that. I, I was a marshal. I would say to you, go free. And you do your best to keep your promise. something, son. You're skin and bones. Ah, Mr. Longley, <clears throat> are your affairs in order? Uh, not exactly. I... No use in stalling, Mr. Longley. The magistrate will be arriving shortly on the stage. Uh, are you the marshal here? Uh... Oh, uh, allow me to introduce you to U.S. Marshal Clyphe Catesby. Blappy, this is uh, J. Edgar Todd, bank examiner. Uh, uh, very good, Marshal. I need you to arrest this man. Long Bill? Do you want me to arrest Long Bill? Oh, yes. He is to be arrested and taken to the jail, where we shall wait for the magistrate to arrive and settle things. Mr. Longley is well aware of the situation. Well, go ahead, son. Do your duty. I tell you, it just ain't been my day. Well, here you go, Marshal. I sure am sorry about this, Bill. Oh, great. A leash. Don't worry, Bill. I won't let you go to jail. I'll take your place if it comes to it. I just hope Ed shows up before that magistrate does. Uh, hold it, Marshal. I believe that is the magistrate now. You're just in time. The Marshal here was just escorting Mr. Longley to the jail, where we can settle this matter. I could really use something long and cold to whip my whistle. Oh, uh, yes, of course. Uh, we shall conduct our business at the restaurant, then. Ed? Ed? When'd you get in? I just come on the noon train. All I could think about was Maine's fine fixings the entire way. Well, I do believe I could eat myself a steer. Did you make the deal? All bought and sold. There's 30,000 greenbacks in that sack. Mr. Todd, this is my brother Ed. As you can see, I have more than enough money to cover the loan. Is that what this is all about? You got me out here in the middle of nowhere for this? Well, Marshal, you may release the prisoner. Don't you ever think before you jump to conclusions? Well, now, I... I... Fine. <clears throat> there you go, Bill. I'm free? I'm free! Free! Free to ride the open range! Free to watch the sunset and the moon rise. Free to dig, to dig in the fertile soil of the prairie. Unleashed! Wahoo! Wait a minute. 
I got a whiff of something. We're looking for it right now. It's here, I know it. Look, kids, I don't care about any backroom poker games. I just want everybody out. I found it. I found it! Hey, guys! If you could just give us a little more time. All right. Enough of this little treasure hunt. Hey, God! You have to give Miss Gilmore another chance. She loves this paper. You see what I mean when I say no one ever listens to the dog? Hey, God! What is it, Wishbone? Hey. What is it, boy? A little thing I like to call a deed. Look, he's found something. Help me with the desk. This is it. I can't believe you found it, Wishbone. What's so hard to believe? I'm a dog of many talents when I'm not on a leash. See, this is it. This proves Miss Gilmore owns the Chronicle. <laughs> well, look, kids, for all I know, anyone could have written this up. To make this a binding document, what you really need is a witness. Leon King, is that you out here causing trouble? Well, if your father were alive... Mr. Johnstone, I didn't know you were here. Lucky for Wanda Gilmore and these kids, I am. I'm trying to take away her newspaper. Well, I remember you trying to take away your little brother's toys. Now, I guess you haven't changed much. Yeah, you tell him, Grandpa. Now, look, I... Now, look nothing. Here's the truth of the matter. Wanda has a deed. The deed has a witness, and you don't have a newspaper. So why don't you just go on and get out of Wanda Gilmore's chronicle? All right, mister. <clears throat> Grandpa. Grandpa. You win. You win. That's great. Miss Gilmore got her paper back. She never lost it. The only problem is, is we're the only ones who know that. Hey, guys, this is a newspaper.
Fishbone. Would you care to join me for breakfast? Oh, yes. Always room for another breakfast. Good evening. This is Helen Davidson for Fast News 57. It has been brought to our attention that there were one or two erroneous statements in Mitch McCain's investigative report on Wanda Gilmore. We seriously hope that our comments and statements did not offend Wanda Gilmore or anyone in the Gilmore family. And now, here's Mitch McCain with part one of his week-long expose, The Dewey Decimal System, A Secret Alien Code. Fact or fiction? Thank you, Helen. Hmm. Wanda, I think we need to do a news piece on something really important. An important political issue. Something that concerns every American citizen's basic rights of freedom and happiness. I want to call it abolishing leash laws. The right thing to do. Whew, another day done. All I got left to work on is my appetite. I just put Ma on the train back to Alabama. Here. I can't take being Marshal no more. There's too much responsibility. Uh, does this mean you'll be returning to your former ways, Calliope? Oh, no. Uh-uh. No, sir. Nope. Calliope. I learned my lesson. Here you go, boys. Thank you, Mame. Thank you, Mame. Tom, you didn't want anything? Uh, no, Mame. I think I'll just stick with coffee. Bill? Your? I was wondering if we could talk to you about something of a uh, business nature. Why, sure, George. Y'all come on by the bank next week. Right now, though, I think I'm gonna take me a short break from the banker's life and head on back out to the ranch. The Old West has always held a special place in our imaginations. Out of this rugged new territory came folk heroes who lived out our dreams of the unspoiled frontier, where freedom was cherished and a simple code of honor bound people together. O. Henry captured the heart of the West for all time in his short stories. They may be short, but the colorful characters and surprise endings stick to our ribs for a long time. So, Mr. Henry, may I call you O? Thanks. You know, I have my own idea for a story. It's about a dog, not just any dog, but it's about a dog, and he talks. Well, okay, he talks, but nobody really pays him any attention. Nobody listens to the dog. That's one of the things he says all the time. And he has this big imagination, and he's all the time finding himself in these incredible stories. Like, um, this one time he's an orphan, and another time he's a great detective, and another time he's a cowboy. And I've been working on my cowboy yet. Listen to this. Woohoo! <laughs> anyway, um, I'll give you this one.
feeling a little eerie? I can't put my nose on it, but something strange is in the air. Do things sometimes seem not quite right? Uh, ooh, something definitely reeks in this vicinity. Don't worry, it's only Wishbone, everyone's favorite literary loving canine, starring in two of the spookiest Halloween stories ever, Frankenstein and the Legend of Sleepy Hollow. What was that? Hello? That's right. You'll thrill as our brave pup goes head to headless with none other than the Headless Horseman himself. The Headless Horseman! Ah! Then, see what happens when you put a not-so-average brain in a below-average body. It's Wishbone starring as the mad scientist in that all-time classic scary tale, Frankenstein. You're a monster! This story's so fantastically creepy, they'll make you jump. Don't miss Wishbone in Frankenstein and the Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Each just $12.99. Available this September on home video from Lyric Studios. Not so far away, there's a wonderful wetland where nature comes alive like never before. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy! It's a magical place full of laughs, songs, and lots of friends. I am Hegdish, explorer extraordinaire. Welcome to Groundling Marsh, home to some of Mother Nature's most delightfully unusual characters. Join Galileo and Maggie, Echo and Crystal, Mudslinger and Hegdish. Did somebody mention my name? And Stax, as they share an adventure after adventure and learn many valuable lessons. How do you feel about sharing Merigo Pop with Maggie? Get ready for plenty of laughs and a whole lot of fun when you come on down to Groundling Marsh, living proof that Mother Nature has a sense of humor. <laughs> Don't miss Groundling Marsh now on public television. Have you ever seen anything like that in your life? Check your local listings or call your public television station for the viewing time in your area. And watch for Groundling Marsh on home video. Available this spring from Lyric Studios. Groundling Marsh. It's the age-old dilemma. I want to do something exciting something different. So you're looking for adventure. Oh, I see. You're not looking for ordinary fun. You've kind of got an itch for something big. Well, get ready to scratch that itch because... Adventure waits on the other side of this fence. And I am out of here! Adventure now comes with four legs and a tail. <coughs> it's Wishbone, the little dog with the big imagination. And he's ready to leap into one of the biggest adventures of all time. Mark Twain's Tom Sawyer. Come out if you're not afraid to face Tom Sawyer the pirate. The furs are flying as Tom Sawyer and his trusty companion Huck Finn set out to have some good old-fashioned fun. <laughs> this is so exciting. That's right. It's two back-to-back -back episodes. First, the fun never ends with Tom and Huck on Jackson Island. I'm the captain, and I say it's time to roll in the leaves. <laughs> Swing on back to Oakdale with Joe, David, Sam, and Wishbone as they go in search of the mysterious no-name grave. But the fun doesn't stop there because Tom and Huck can't seem to stay out of trouble, like investigating their own mysterious graveyard, chasing down all the bad guys, digging for treasure in haunted houses, and exploring old caves. Even with all this excitement, you'll be hungry for more. Delicious! It's two great episodes on one terrific video. And now it's time for the Wishbone Floor Show. Fetch your copy of A Tale in Twain from Lyric Studios. Also available from Big Red Chair Books, a division of Lyric Publishing, The Adventures of Wishbone Books. Years ago, in ancient Greece, there lived a man who was the strongest of the strong, the bravest of the brave, the wisest of the wise. His name, Hercules. Hercules? That's impossible. It, it can't be. But it is. Experience all the strength of this legendary hero as portrayed by the one and only Wishbone. Mm. 
I can't talk. That's right. It's Wishbone in one of his most powerful roles ever. Face it, Nereus. Your trickery cannot fool me. When our hero is sent on a quest to retrieve three golden apples, he must first get past fierce dragons. Dragons? I definitely do not like dragons. Then it's on to Mount Olympus, where he must outsmart the Titan Atlas. Now that could be a problem. Experience the grandeur. I await your command. The spectacle. Hey, my bow! It's gone! Someone stole my bow! The excitement. Mm. And so our hero returns victorious. One man whose story transcends the ages. Whoa, that would make him 280 in dog years. One dog who can always sniff out a good adventure. I want a slice with a letter on it, and somebody get this hat off of me right now. Hello? It's Hercules Unleashed from Lyric Studios. Fetch your copy today. Also available from Big Red Chair Books, a division of Lyric Publishing, The Adventures of Wishbone Books. What's the story of Wishbone?